Okay, so this is video number three. I'm beginning to understand why these lessons are so boring. Um, okay, so we're going to explain how the, the third experiment can be explained in terms of the flux cutting and flux linking model. So here's our two coils. Um, this is the coil that actually has the current running through it, and this is the one that is not connected to the battery. Now, um, if we pull the coils apart so that we can see what's going on, um, what's going to happen then is that when we, um, when we connect this coil, the left-hand coil, to the battery, a current runs through the coil. Now that is going to cause a magnetic field to be set up around the coil. We can represent that by drawing some of the field lines. So field lines are going to be set up like this. Okay. Now, um, so you can imagine that when the current uh, starts to flow, the field lines are established and the field is set up. Now, if the other coil is nearby, or even if it's right up close against the first coil, then what's going to happen is that as the field is set up, the lines of flux that we've drawn here, particularly these ones in here, yeah. are going to pass through the turns of the coil. In other words, the turns of the coil, which are like that, are going to be linked by the um, magnetic flux lines. And there are many magnetic flux lines and there are many turns on the coil. So there's going to be a lot of linking. So the flux linking this coil changes. And when the flux linkage changes, that causes the EMF to be induced and so we see the current flowing. Um, now, we can explain this using the language of flux cutting as well because we can say that when the current starts to flow in the first coil, the field is set up around the coil. Now, you can think of it a little bit like opening an umbrella. Um, the field opens up um, and the field lines are set up and as the field is set up so the field lines cut through the turns of the coil um, and as lines of flux are cut so a, uh, an EMF is induced. Now once the current in the first coil is steady then the field around it is also going to be steady and therefore no more lines of flux are cut by the second coil or no more lines of flux are linked by the second coil. So the amount of flux linkage does not change and therefore no EMF is induced. So we only see an EMF induced when the field is being set up. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, similarly, um, when we break the circuit to the first coil, the current stops flowing and therefore the field is going to collapse or vanish. Now again, we can think of this in terms of flux cutting or flux linking. If the field, we think of the field as collapsing, then all the field lines basically uh, collapse back into the magnet, into the coil, um, a bit like folding the umbrella. And therefore those flux lines are cut by the coil, but in the reverse direction. So we get an EMF, but it's in the opposite sense. Uh, we can also describe it in terms of flux linking. Um, what happens is that this field disappears. Um, and therefore the lines that did link the secondary coil now don't link it anymore. They're just gone. So there is a change in the amount of flux linking the second coil and therefore there is an EMF induced. So that's how we explain uh, what is going on in that experiment. Okay, so now we've uh, demonstrated electromagnetic induction by doing our three experiments and we've attempted to explain 
the three experiments in terms of the flux cutting or flux linking model. Okay, um, let's move this out of the way. Oops. Um, now we're going to formalize it and state Faraday's law and Lenz's law, which describe all of this. Okay, so um, there are some notes to go with this, which I'm going to uh, attempt to copy and send to you. And they look like this. Uh, so, um, Ersted, the Danish physicist, in round about 1819, he discovered electromagnetism. In other words, that a magnetic field is set up when you have a current carrying conductor. So that's this idea of uh, current in a conductor giving you magnetism. Now, that set everybody thinking. And after about 10 years, 1831, Michael Faraday in England and about the same time, Joseph Henry in America, they discovered that um, the reverse is also possible. In other words, that a magnetic field can produce a current. Um, so that, in fact, uh, if you had relative motion, if you have a moving conductor in a magnetic field, that causes a current to flow in the conductor. Now, Faraday used the idea of field lines, as we have done, to explain what was going on. And I've ex explained all of that here in this note, which you're going to get, hope, I hope. Now, when we summarize all that, um, we can put it together, and Faraday put it together in Faraday's Law. Now, what we see from the experiments is that um, the size of the EMF depends on several factors. One is the strength of the magnetic field. Another is the number of turns on the coil, if it is a coil. Um, another is the area of the coil. So a bigger coil is capable of catching more field lines, and therefore it'll induce a bigger EMF. And the other thing is that if you change the speed at which the magnet or the conductor moves, that changes the, uh, the, the, uh, the EMF as well. Okay. So, in general, the larger and the faster the change in flux linkage occurs, the greater the induced EMF. So this is all encapsulated in Faraday's law, which says that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. Okay, The magnitude of induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. In other words, um, the faster the flux linking the coil changes, uh, the bigger the EMF that is induced. Okay, um, now we can turn Faraday's law directly into an equation, which is at the bottom of the page here. If we measure flux using the symbol phi, which we did last week, a change in flux is delta phi. A rate of change in flux is delta phi over delta t. And if we use E to denote EMF, then Faraday's law says that E is proportional to delta phi divided by delta t. Um, now, that would be the flux change in a single turn. Now, magically, we can change that proportionality into an equation by just simply placing an equal sign here. Notice that there's no constant proportionality, no other term. So how did that happen? Well, how it happens is because we actually use this equation to define the unit of flux linkage, which, as you hopefully remember from last week, is the Weber. Okay. Um, so the EMF will be in volts if the flux linkage or change in flux linkage is in Webers and the time is in seconds. Now, the Weber is actually defined using this law. And what we say is that the Weber is the amount of magnetic flux which, if it links a circuit of one turn, produces in it an EMF 
of 1 volt if it is reduced to zero at a uniform rate in a time of one second. Okay, we'll look at that again. Um, the Weber is the amount of magnetic flux which links a one turn circuit and produces an EMF of one volt if that amount of flux is reduced to zero in a time of one second. Okay, in other words, a Weber is the change in magnetic flux that will cause or induce an EMF of one volt in a time of one second. Do you have to know that definition? Yes, you do, I'm afraid. Um, you need to know that definition and you also need to know Faraday's law uh, in words. Now, um, if we define the Weber in this way, then the constant of proportionality here becomes one. And we can just state Faraday's law as E equals delta phi by delta T. Now, the last little wrinkle here is that um, E is, uh, this is for a turn, a one turn coil. So, uh, in this, if we want to apply this to a coil of N turns, we have to put in a factor of N. And we do that here. And now we come up with E is equal to delta N phi by delta T. So this is Faraday's law expressed for uh, a conductor of N turns linking an amount of flux phi where that uh, flux all goes away in a time delta T. Okay, so we're at uh, just short of 12 minutes, so we're getting slightly better. Um, Okay, I'm going to stop at this point and go one more video in which we're going to use this equation to do the final thing, which is to perform a calculation. Um, right, and I really wish I hadn't started doing YouTube broadcasting in the hardest topic of the unit, but there you go.